What is going on guys? Ryan from Lemon Salty here and today I am here with Senior Salty and we are doing a little bit of offshore fishing today out of Fort Pierce. Right now we are trolling in about 55 feet of water. We got our typical three planers, three rods set up here. Two planers, a number five planer, number two planer, daisy chain on top. Looking to get some early morning here, tuna, some kingfish or anything like that here in the morning. We're gonna be trolling over here. Probably we'll hit another spot and troll. After that, midday, we'll be doing some bottom fishing. Hoping to put some fish in the box today. Anyway, no matter what, we're gonna have a good time out here offshore fishing. Looks like a big clump of seaweed to me. Is it? Oh yeah, there's a fish. You got a fish on. Yep, okay. We got a fish on unexpectedly. <laughs> Ah, watch out. Oh, I think so. Did he? That looked like a king. I think it was a king. Damn. Well, he definitely had a fish on. I'm 90% sure it was a kingfish. Probably borderline keeper size. And uh, he just took a run once we got to the boat and we were uh, handlining. He just came right off. Um, so it's a good sign. At least we got a bite over here. We just got to a new spot. And we just saw some big fish airing out, like big time jumping out of the water, like 200 feet in front of the boat. So we're trolling that way right now, hoping to get hooked up here soon. But definitely some good signs of life over here, a lot better than the last spot, so. Woo, fish on. We have switched things up and we have anchored up at a reef around 45 feet deep. We've been throwing some chum out for just about half an hour. Just got rigged up with a fish finding rig. We're changing things up. We finally got hooked up here. Not sure what to, but looks like a blue runner. It is a blue runner. Not good eating, but might keep for bait. There we go. That's the first fish in the boat today. Nice little blue runner there. Do you want to keep him for bait or what do you want to do? Yeah, slice him up for some yep. fresh bait. Well, he swallowed the hook anyway, so he was probably going to be kept anyway. All right, first fish in the boat. Let's hope this leads to some more. Living Salty Senior is on again. Another fish flowing out a piece of shrimp. I'm using chunk mullet. So a little bigger than the last time, so we'll see what it is. But, um,. Kind of fighting like the blue runner again, but hopefully it's something a little bit more decent. We're trying to get some table fare tonight. Oh, that's better. Is that a mangrove? I don't know, but there's... The... Oh, that's a big mangrove. Stop, stop, stop. Where's the hand? Hang on. Hang on. It's got it in its mouth, so... It's not early because the barracuda's coming to get him. Oh, yes! That's... That's a huge mangrove snapper! Oh, my... Heck yes! Senior Salty putting it in the boat! Look at the size of that thing! How big is it? Oh, he's big enough! Oh my god, wait! That's a trophy sized mangrove! At least for us, I mean that is. Nice freaking job! Let's go! There we go! Beautiful mangrove snapper right there. That is gonna be dinner. Oh, cut off. Oh, well, while we're taking some pictures with dad's fish, we got a hit on our chunk of mullet. Bites turning on a little bit here, huh? Bites turning on a little bit of chum. A little bit of chum going out. Yeah. I don't know if I pulled the hook or if we got cut off. Just with the pizza. Bonita. Oh, we got cut off. Uh, Mr. Barracuda probably just ate our fish. Dang, or that or a shark. All right, but this is a good sign. We're, we're doing pretty good here. So we're going to keep putting out some bonita chunks, some mullet chunks, keep the chum flowing, and let's see what else we can get for dinner. Fish on! Oh, fish on! Nice. There we go. Putting the heat on them. Predictions. Wait a second. Looks like a blue runner to me. It's a blue runner again. It looks like a blue runner. Oh, it, yeah, get away from there. Yeah, we're not feeding the kudas today. <laughs> Pull them up. This is no Salty Senior's number second blue runner. Yep. There we go. Nice fish. He's going back though. Hooray! 
Senior Shelty's destroying me today. Every day. And, oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> you guys hear this? Another blue runner? Oh, yeah. nothing to brag about no, then. Nothing to brag. No, nothing to brag. I know what it is. Swinging man as I'm slicing up a blue runner right now to get ready to put some strip baits out. No, we're not trying to do that. <laughs> That's a good fish. Oh my god. Not sure what it is. Not feeling like a good fish, I don't think, but it kind of came up to the surface a little bit, so I don't know. I haven't fought this big of a fish in a while. <laughs> Woo, you can tell how, how out of shape I am. <laughs> oh, that's a shark. Play the banjo a little bit. Yep. Well, it started seeming very sharky there and started running off like crazy. Tightened up the drag and look at that. We got broke off and actually broke at the uh right before the knot so the knot didn't fail the uh the mono failed or the yeah the mono leader we're using i think it's 40 pounds fell right there on us which is crazy because we had a skinny little 3-0 hook in that shark's mouth and that didn't get cut off first which is just mind-boggling here but we're gonna re-rig put some more baits out and uh hopefully can get one more fish for dinner if not that mangrove snapper is gonna be very tasty let me go diving and stuff here yeah, they here come. Yeah. Absolutely. They know a free meal. Yep. Well, that is going to do it here for the uh, inshore anchoring up and chumming. Uh, we ended up only getting the one mangrove snapper. The bite actually kind of tur turned off after I caught that shark. Don't know if it was a tide situation or what it was. We're going to head back in, fillet up that fish, and uh, we're not going to be eating it tonight, so we're going to eat that in a couple days. So I'll see you guys whenever that is in the kitchen. Welcome to the kitchen. Today we are going to be frying up the snapper, doing a little bit of Cajun New Orleans style. We are making fried snapper bites with a New Orleans remoulade sauce, which I already have prepared right here. It was very easy to make, and I'll tell you guys exactly how to do it. Just made ahead of time because I'm gonna throw this in the fridge while we wait a little bit, and then we're gonna be frying up the snapper. So to make this delicious New Orleans remoulade sauce, you are going to need, and just to let you know all of the measurements and everything like that and all the ingredients I'm using for this is going to be in the description down below. So don't worry about grabbing your pen or paper and writing all this down now. Just go on to the description and go check it out. To make the New Orleans remoulade sauce, I am going to be frying up one pound of snapper, which is going to be, to make the sauce, you're going to need one quarter of a cup of Dijon mustard half of a one-third cup of mayonnaise, one and a half tablespoons of chopped parsley, one and a half tablespoons of minced shallot, one and a half tablespoons of minced celery, half of a one and a quarter cup of minced dill pickles, which I ended up using this dill relish instead, half of a tablespoon of minced garlic, half of a tablespoon of prepared horseradish, half of a tablespoon of cider vinegar, which I didn't have on hand, so I'm just using this red wine vinegar instead, half of a tablespoon of olive oil, half of a tablespoon of lemon juice, I did almost a full teaspoon of Cajun seasoning, and half a teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce, or however you want to say it. So that's what it took to make this delicious New Orleans remoulade sauce, and you just mix it all together. Kind of has like a little bit of a tartar sauce, tartar sauce kind of taste. It's got a little bit more of a tang to it than that, but make it ahead of time. I'm gonna go pop it in the fridge now. We're gonna wait a little bit and then start frying up that snapper. So it's time to get frying here. I just beat two eggs into a bowl here and we are going to add a quarter of a cup of Dijon mustard. 
I believe it is a teaspoon, no, sorry, one tablespoon of the Cajun seasoning, and then three tablespoons of some heavy whipping cream here into the bowl. So we're just gonna go ahead and mix this all together. We're just gonna go ahead and give this a little mix over here on up. So we're kind of making a nice little, nice little base layer for our fish. So what we're going to do is in a second, we are actually going to be crushing up saltines. Yes, we're going to be crushing up some saltine crackers and we're going to be using that as the outer layer to fry our fish. And you can see here we got this nice, beautiful, spicy looking uh, base layer. So we're going to dunk all of our fish in here. Then they're going to go into the saltines and then into the frying oil. All right, let's hop on over. Now the recipe calls for one sleeve of saltines. And I don't really know how much to do. So we're going to put it and crush it into a bag here. That way we can end up just tossing all of our fish in there and tossing them around in here nice and easily. But put these in here, try one of the saltines. Hmm. Tastes like a saltine cracker. I'm really hungry today guys, I didn't eat lunch so. It says to just smash the saltines so that is what we are going to do. That looks good. That is the end product here of the smashed saltines. Looking at our fish and looking at that saltines, we're going ahead, we're doing the whole sleeve. I'm eating one more because it was good, but. I like this idea and that's why I almost really like this recipe. As compared to a regular fried fish recipe that you would like normally do, we have like, instead of just regular eggs, we got the eggs with the heavy cream, Cajun sauce, all that kind of stuff, which is not something I've ever done or remotely done before. And I've never even heard of anybody covering fish in saltine crackers and uh, frying it. So this recipe really caught my attention for those reasons. And uh, that's where we're trying it out today. This should be good. So we are going to go back on over to our station. Okay, perfect. So let's get started here. Let's start throwing some fish. Into here, I think I'm gonna do one, two, three. We're gonna do three batches or four and five. It's probably going to make a mess. Just already preparing for that. There you go, we got our fish inside. And now we're just gonna kinda of toss them around. Get that covered. We're trying not to lose that, um, that egg mix on the bag as much. We're just gonna to try to get a light coating on it. All right. Is looking pretty good in here. So one way you can always test to see if your oil is ready is to take whatever you're using, typically like flour or something like that, but you just take a little crumb of, we'll take a crumb of the saltine, drop it in. Oh yeah, we got a nice sizzle from that bad boy right there. So here's what our fish looks like going in. So you're going to gently lay that in there. Perfect, the heat looks very good. If you do have a temperature gauge, you're gonna want it at 350 degrees to do this frying today. We're just winging it, because why not? <laughs> Come in with our last piece. Right there, perfect. Now it says about three minutes on each size, each side. Uh, you guys saw how big the pieces were, so just making sure they're not sticking and they are not, so that is fantastic. We just had our timer go off, so we are going to try to give these a quick turn. We're gonna give this guy another probably three minutes or so. We just ramped up the heat, and uh, we'll see how it goes. All right, timer's up. Time to check on how these are doing. We don't have one of those fancy frying strain things or whatever. We just, we got a paper paper towel, so that's how we were acting here on Living Salty. But here, this is what we are working with. Here's where our fish looks like. Like I said, the heat probably still needs to go a little bit higher to get a little bit firmer on the outside, but we're just gonna make sure it's cooked. Um, maybe we'll leave it in for another minute just to get them crispier, but that pretty much is the premise on how to do this. So I'm going to finish the other two batches, fry them up, and I will see you guys when they are all ready. Okay, so we got the snapper all finished frying up here. These are the kind of the beginning ones. This is the middle one. This is the last one. So you can see this one just came out of the fryer, but kind of perfected that fryer oil temperature at the end. Got this nice and crispy meat, you can see. 
nice crispy outside saltine layer. So it takes a little bit of trial error with the oil if you don't have the right temperature, but we have our New Orleans Remoulade sauce right on the plate here. And we are gonna be giving this a little bit of a taste test for you. And full disclaimer, I went out to the store today and bought fries. So I have a little bit of like a fish and chips here, but I 100% forgot to make them. I was so wrapped up with everything. I just completely forgot. So we're just having fish and probably some random vegetable in the fridge tonight. But here we go. Got a nice little bite right there. Whoo, that looks delicious. Hmm. Hmm. That right there, I mean, that snapper is cooked perfectly. Nice and moist still on the inside. Do a bite without the sauce. Okay. Wow, that is delicious. Oh my God. So one of the things I was worried about with the whole egg wash that we did was that the, we wouldn't really taste it. All like the seasonings, the heavy cream, everything like that we put into that egg wash. I honestly didn't think that we'd be able to make a difference, but eating that piece of fish just plain, you can definitely taste that like Dijon, the Cajun. Yeah, <laughs> Dijon and Cajun. You can definitely hear, taste the Dijon in the Cajun seasoning coming to life with just the fish. Add in the New Orleans remoulade there and you just get a nice New Orleans Cajun Dijon spice just kick right into your taste buds. It's absolutely delicious in this piece right here, especially. I mean, we got a nice crunch with that one. Let's take another bite here. Mmm. Mm-mm. The saltine cracker crust, absolutely delicious. Be 100% honest, I've made a lot of fish, um, fried fish at home. This has got to be one of my favorite ways to do it. Honestly, I've done Italian breadcrumbs, I've done panko breadcrumbs, now we did the saltine. I love that little extra kick of spice. It just adds so much more flavor to it. And this is delicious. Highly, highly recommend. 10 out of 10. Give this beautiful dish a try. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is going to wrap it up for the video today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure you hit that like button and definitely consider subscribing down below if you like catching cooks and want to see more of them in the future. If you guys did enjoy this video, I will link another catch and cook video over here on the left side of the screen at the end of the video. If you like this one, I think you're really gonna like that video as well. Thank you so much for watching again. And until my next video, remember to keep living salty.